Hey guys, good morning. In today's video, I wanna give you a tour of our vegetable garden. I wanna show you how everything's doing. Um, as you guys know, those of you who have been watching our videos, this is the first year I've planted in this space and I'm so thrilled with how everything's doing, especially given the, given the fact that it's been over 100 degrees for the last three weeks. So I really do wanna go bed by bed and show you how everything's doing, um, what I'm growing currently. But first I wanted to answer some of the most commonly asked questions about this space, starting with the picket fence. So this is something that we had built this spring. We hired a handyman to come build it for us because Aaron and I were good at some things, but building things is not one of our talents whatsoever. Um, so he came in, did a great job. I think that these are about like 30 inches or so tall. I, I can't remember the exact measurements, but I remember there was a lot more decisions I had to make about this fence than I thought. Like, like you know, how I wanted them to be cut, the peaks, if I wanted them to be you know, real pointy or not as pointy, anyway. Um, but I love the way it turned out. We also had it stained black. I was toying with leaving it natural or going white because we do have a lot of white picket. But I wanna start adding black in more to our garden. I like how foliage looks up against it. So I wanted to show you the kind of stain we used on this fence, because that was a big question. So this is it right here. You can get it at Home Depot. So we chose the color ebony in a semi-transparent stain. I'll put a little picture of the formula up on the screen so you guys can see it if you're interested in knowing. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about was the type of gravel we used in this area. So we did put landscape fabric down first. Uh, this kind of gravel is called three-quarter chip in the color blue. Um, I didn't really know that there was as many types of gravel as there are, but we just wanted to match our driveway. So we um, just went and found what we could that matched and it looks really good, I think. And I decided to go with gravel in here as opposed to some other type of mulch because it's clean, it's tidy, we have a huge yard and I didn't need extra maintenance in this space. Plus, I really like the look of gravel. I think it looks really pretty in this space. Um, our raised beds are made out of red wood which is a really great wood in garden spaces because it doesn't weather really quickly. It won't fall apart. Uh, I went with redwood over cedar because cedar is so expensive. I did not know, oh my word, it's like three times the price of redwood. Um, these are two by 12s and we went with three foot widths. This is a six foot, it's a kind of an L shape. And the rest of my beds, there's uh, four three by six beds and four three by four beds in addition to these L-shaped beds. Um, I initially had some raised beds from Gardener Supply put in this space and they're made of cedar. They're beautiful beds. I was so excited to get them, but I got them laid out. And I think for the size of this space, because it's a pretty good size space, they were a little bit too short. I think they came in like about this tall. And for this size of space, I needed something a little bit more beefy. So we are utilizing those beds. They're behind our greenhouse. We just stacked them one on top of the other. So they're like tall, nice tall raised beds. And I have sweet potatoes planted in them that are doing really, really well. Uh, and then I wanted to show you, this is the fertilizer I use. I work it into every single bed for every single crop. And I think that between this and the type of soil mix I have in there, I think that's why I'm having so much, so much success in this space. The soil mix is a special blend that's made in Boise. I think it's, I think it's Cloverdale Nursery. Um, it's 56% premium topsoil, 34% forest compost, and 12% composted manure. That's the blend, I think that adds up to 100%. Um, and I was a little skeptical of it because a couple of the beds after sitting, these were all filled in the fall. After sitting through the winter, they were kind of compacted, just a, just a couple of them. And so I didn't know how like root crops would grow in them, but so far everything's doing great. I was happy with how my potatoes did, carrots and beets and stuff are all growing great. So I'm happy with that. Um, the only insecticides I have used in this space, I've not had very many insect problems whatsoever which is awesome. I think it, maybe it's because it's such a new space the insects haven't figured out where to go to feast. Um, I'm hoping that they never find it, but this is all I've used. This is Sluggo Plus. It is an organic. I use it for earwigs. Earwigs are a huge problem here. They're horrible, horrible insects. They look scary. I hate them. Um, I remember having to check my towels growing up as a kid because they liked damp, like dark places and they would like to come into the bathrooms and hang out in your towels, which is gross. Um, and I've sprayed Thuricide once on my broccoli because I noticed some caterpillars and that took care of it, but nothing has bothered my cabbage. Like everything is doing so well. So those are the two insecticides there. Okay, so I think I covered all of the questions. If I think of anything else, I'll let you know, but let's just start in the corner over here and then just work our way through the garden space. 
so we did just um, have these installed, these cedar arbors right here. Um, and the jury's still out as to whether or not I'm gonna put one in the front. We just put up a video about it. We'll link it down below if you wanna learn a little bit more about those. But in this bed right here, this is a garden treasure tomato. This is a new slicer type tomato that's coming out from Proven Winners next year. They sent one over for us to try out and it's like, it's doing so well. And I got this pretty late in the season. So like, I am just thrilled with the growth. I've been picking tomatoes off of it. I do need to come out and do a little pruning, a little maintenance on all of my tomatoes. So um, that's something that needs to happen. I have a cucumber right here in the front of this bed. And there are little, little cucumbers on it right now. Check that out. And I can't remember what kind this is. I usually try to stick the tag in the bed, but yeah, it's just, they look like pickles. Look at that. Super cute. And this one's just been bearing like crazy. Okay, so let's go to this bed next. I have got a butternut squash, which I planted really late in the season, like end of June. And I figured that maybe I would get some butternut squash by October. <laughs> I don't know, sometimes this late in the season, you just throw in whatever you can in any kind of empty space because I really wanted this space to be productive. Uh, I didn't want any space to sit empty. Uh, so I'm hoping, you know, even if I get a couple off of this vine, I'll be really happy. Right here is an English cucumber that's just going nuts. Look at this. Minus the tumbleweeds that are kind of caught in it. But there are just cucumbers like crazy. One night I, um, I harvested 14 off of this vine and there's like two, four, six, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, four, there's 15 on it right now that I need to come out and harvest. This one has been amazing. Um, and then right here, I've got another garden treasure tomato in a container. So I actually got three of them and I planted them in three different types of location one in a raised bed, one in a container, and one straight in the soil in another area. I just wanted to see how each one of them grew. And this one's actually a little bit smaller than the one in the raised bed so far. So it's kind of interesting. In this bed right here, I have Blue Lake pole beans, uh, which were planted in June. So they're just kind of starting to put on a lot of growth. Um, they are blooming right now. I did see a couple beans on here the other day. Oh yeah, there's just some little little beans right here and they'll cover this bamboo trellis right here this is where I had sugar pod peas this spring and once that crop was done I pulled them and planted the beans right here I have a crookneck squash and if you look inside the plant right here you can see look at that and all its warty goodness right there it's looking awesome and there's lots of blooms starting and a couple of big ones open this one was also planted late. At the same time, I planted the butternut squash, kind of insane, the difference in size. Right here, I planted ambrosia corn. This is in one of the beds I had my garlic planted in, which I harvested right before the 4th of July. Um, so this is gonna be a late crop of corn. I'm hoping for maybe first part of September. It's just starting to form some tassels right here, which is exciting. But ambrosia is a bicolor corn and one of the most popular in our area. Super, super sweet, it's really good. In this L-shaped bed right here, I have one zucchini plant. It's like taking over the garden space here. Um, and I kept up on it for the first two or three weeks it was bearing and we were eating all the zucchini and now I'm like giving it away. It's amazing how just how much one plant will produce. In the corner of this bed, I have a Roma tomato that's just putting on tomatoes like crazy. It's kind of a weird, uh, usually my Romas grow a lot taller than this one, but this one is just like, I'm just gonna produce tomatoes. That's all, no leaf, leafy growth. We don't need any leafy growth, just like tons of tomatoes. So I'm gonna need to get with it. These are starting to ripen, so I'm gonna have to figure out what I wanna do with all of these. Um, and then in the front here, this is called a Mazel Basil right here. This is a new basil that's coming out from Proven Winners next year. Uh, and it's a really like vigorous basil. The a wonderful thing about it is it's a sterile basil. So even if it blooms, it's not gonna wreck the flavor. It's not gonna um, take the vigor down of the plant. Uh, I have been trying to keep like the blooms off of it just because that's what I'm used to doing with basil, but it's not as necessary, which is awesome. Erin and I have eaten a lot of this with fresh tomatoes and it's just got a really good flavor. 
And then I've got an eggplant right here, and this is a variety classic. I don't know if you can see that right there. And it's got a bunch of blooms forming. I actually don't like eggplant, but I like to grow them because they're pretty. <laughs> I actually um, shine them up and use them in table centerpieces or floral arrangements. So that's what's in that bed. And this one here, I've got um, beans that are called Nash. So this bed, I don't know what exactly is going on with these beans. They're bearing like crazy, but I've got Nash beans in another bed that look a lot better than this one. Um, so I don't know what the difference is, except for this tomato was absolutely enormous. It grew so, so big before I got the supports for them. And it was kind of leaning over on the beans. So I don't think that they were getting enough light and they were being smothered. Um, so between those things, I think that's maybe what happened. So these supports, you can actually see the one in this previous bed here. These are from Gardener's Supply. They're called the SX Round Trellis. I got them in a seven foot size, but they're, they have like segments like that. So I took one rung out because I didn't think I needed them to be seven feet. Um, on the other tomatoes, I think I should have left them in <laughs> um, because the, they're just going crazy. And like I said, I do need to do some major pruning on these. Um, so this is a super fantastic tomato, which is a really great slicer tomato. And we've been picking off of them like crazy. Carrots right here, which I've just been picking as we've been using them in the kitchen. Um, I planted Parisian and red Danvers, I think. Russell got in here after I planted and kind of like, he didn't use it as a litter box. In fact, he doesn't in here, which is nice, uh, but he likes to like roll around in the mulch or something, I don't know. So all of my carrots, like I'll pull carrots out of the same kind of area and I'll get like a round Parisian and then a Danvers and then another couple round ones. And anyway, it's kind of funny. Right here is a melon plant. This one I believe is just a cantaloupe. Look at this. Oh, these were planted really late at the same time as the butternut squash. I had lettuce in this area. So after I harvested that, after it got really hot, I went and picked up a vine and just decided to pop that in here. Blooms everywhere on it. I'm hoping to get some by the end, some ripe ones by the end of the season. This right here is a sun sugar cherry tomato, which produces these lovely little orange cherry tomatoes. And they're the sweetest things ever between sun sugar and sweet olive. Sweet olive tomatoes are fantastic. Um, I've got four pepper plants here. I've got a serrano, which you can see the little red. I didn't harvest them in time. I can still eat them, but. Uh, and then I've got a corsel pepper right here, which is really good. They're kind of mild. They're not super hot peppers. And then right here, holy mole, kind of growing kind of tall and gangly, but it does have some peppers on it. And then a sweet banana right here. And then I popped some celosia in here. Celosia, celosia, I don't know how you pronounce it. Uh, it's kind of a funky looking plant. Um, it was more pink when I planted it and now it looks more red and it looks horrible with my centerpiece planter right here. It's totally jarring to me. Every time I look in this garden space, I'm like, oh my gosh, nope, nope. I need to get rid of something. So I think I'm gonna pop these out and put them in a fall planter because this is a little too much. Um, celery right here, which I've been harvesting as I need it. I need to get with it though, because it's starting to flower. Then in this bed right here, there's my other Nash beans. They look a little bit better, like I said, than the other little crop I've got going. But I've got several peppers. There's the mini bell, cute little sweet peppers here. And then this is a red beauty right here. A few nice peppers on there. This is a King Arthur, which I've um, harvested a ton of bell peppers. You can see, you can see them right here a little bit better. There's kind of a good, good looking one. And then this is called a Hala Pride. This is a jalapeno that's got, it's just loaded. I mean, it is just loaded with fruit. Look at that. Like I'm surprised this plant isn't falling over with weight, the weight from all of the peppers. And then of course I just popped some marigolds in there. I just like that fun, bright color. Then I've got a red brandywine tomato, which um, in a really, really stiff windstorm, it kind of like bent over and kind of bent my frame a little bit. So I'm gonna be working on that, like trying to get it wired in the right spot. I got these uh, trellis supports a lot later than I should have. I didn't even think about supports. And by the time I actually got them here, uh, my tomatoes were massive and I had to cut, it actually made my stomach sick 
how much I had to cut off of these tomatoes. Like Aaron can attest, we were out here, it was almost dark and I just sat on the edge of the bed like, I hope I didn't just kill my tomatoes because to get them threaded through these supports was really difficult. So that is a good lesson not to wait to put your supports on. Put them on right when you plant your tomatoes. This is another crop of ambrosia corn. I planted this about a week and a half to two weeks after that first bed over there. And then this is where I harvested potatoes and I decided to go in with some zinnia seeds. And I did that last week and they're already up. Um, and that actually reminds me, this is a really good bed to see what kind of irrigation system we have set up in here. We did do a video showing you kind of how to set this up. I uh, will link it down below, but this is actually run off of our irrigation system. This whole garden space has a zone all of its own. Um, so we can run the whole thing uh, just separate from everything else in our garden. Uh, and the nice thing about it is that every single bed has its own faucet. So when I was done with the potatoes, this bed sat empty for like a week or two. I had the water shut off. And I really liked the, having the ability to do that because when you run excess water into your garden beds, all it does is it leaches out nutrients. Um, and I don't wanna do that if I don't have a crop in here, you know, cause I am really diligent about adding biotone and compost into these beds after each crop. Um, and I don't wanna just kinda I don't know, like negate, is that the right word? Negate my efforts um, by just running water in here for no reason. And it saves on water because you can control. And I know that like, you know, it's kind of difficult to have it set up like this if you've already got an existing garden, but we had this area so torn up that we just thought, you know what, from the very beginning, let's just put this thing in right. Let's, you know, take a little bit longer to get the garden space ready because, you know, it's more of a process when you have more things done because you have to budget for it and plan for it and line people out to help you with it. Um, but I'm so happy that we did it that way. So in this bed right here, I have a watermelon. It's super cute. Look at this. Look. I don't know how well you can see that with all the foliage, but oh, I can't wait. There's a couple little ones forming over there, and there's another one you can see really well on this side of the boxwood pot. This one has been kind of a catch-all bed. I planted a few herbs in here. There's a rosemary, there's a basil, dill, some thyme, and then some marigolds that I had. I picked them up, I, and I can't even remember what I was gonna use them for. They sat, and I just watered them in their little four packs for a while, and I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna pop them in somewhere where I've got some space. So, and I like the little touch of color. I've got a pot of chives right here that I decided to put in a pot because they do want to naturalize and spread all over the place. So I wanted to contain those, kind of like you do with mint. You know, you wouldn't want to plant mint anywhere you don't want it to take over. This is actually where um, some of our irrigation, like we can control it right here. Erin just had these couple of things put in um, where we can run separate zones. So there's four zones here that we can run off of this faucet essentially. Anyway, I'm still trying to talk him into doing an, like a more comprehensive irrigation video because he's really good at that kind of thing. Um, and then in our last bed right here, I have got a honeydew melon. I was out here last night looking around to see if there was any fruit. And I think the only fruit I've got are like little babies, little baby fruits. I don't see any big ones yet, but tons of blooms, lots of little babies. So hopefully over the next couple of months, because we usually have a really long summer, like it usually goes um, into October pretty good. So I'm hoping we have enough time to get some fruit. Then I have one red cabbage that needs to just be pulled. I left it there because I thought I was gonna use it. Um, and I like the structure of it, to be honest with you, in the garden, I like the way it looks, but it's starting to look a little bit tired. So that's pretty much this garden space. Um, I kind of want to take you down here really quick because this is an area where we are going to be developing it, but I, I did pop a few vegetable plants in down here just because it's a really good thing to do with empty space that you have no plans for. Um, and we kind of, you know, we're done with big projects for this year. So I thought, you know what, I'll just get some pumpkins and stuff. They take up a lot of space. They help suppress weeds and I might get a few fruit off of them. So right here, I've got a couple of jack-o'-lantern pumpkins that are just starting to put on a lot of growth. This area was where we had a big bunch of privets removed and I have boxwoods coming, but they're not coming until this fall. So of course I don't wanna plant anything else until those arrive because that's my structure planting. 
So I thought, well, this is the only area that gets really full sun. So I just popped a couple pumpkins in. Right here, we had a old lilac removed that when they came in to remove it, it just fell over. It hardly had any root system at all left. So I put a couple of Cinderella pumpkins in here. Check this out. Can you see in here? So exciting. People kind of laugh at me when they come in here because it's right along our driveway and they're like, did you plant pumpkins? <laughs> just like random right here. I said, well, yes I did because I didn't want to replant grass in this area because Aaron and I are planning on doing a whole overhaul. We're going to put in a big walkway and then heavily landscape this side of our yard, which means we're going to be tearing out a lot of sod anyway, and I don't want to plant it and then have to tear it out. In this other uh, little cutout where we had a big elm tree, I did plant some flowers, but this is where I planted more vegetables here. So this is where we're gonna really start heavily planting evergreens, like big ones, big blue spruce. Like I'm planning on putting a blue spruce about here. That's why we stopped the arbs because I wanted the hedge of arbs to look like it's just disappearing behind a whole bunch of other stuff down here. I didn't want it to look like, you know, a line of soldiers all the way to the end of the fence and then stop. I want them to look like they gently disappear. So of course I have all of this extra space here that has water running to it. Um, that I didn't really have plans for. So I've got another garden treasure tomato. So this is the third of the bunch right here. It's doing really well. I've got a green zebra, which I have, it's an heirloom tomato. I've, I've only picked a couple of them off. This is a garden gem tomato. This is another one from Proven Winners. I've got one here and one in a pot in our cold frame and it produces, it's kind of like a mix between a cherry and a Roma. They're really tasty. Um, and I like the fact they don't have like a ton of pulp in them. Um, so they're really good for like crazy salad. I really like that they hold up really well. Right down here, now I'm gonna have to look in here cause I can't really remember. This is a delicata squash, which I see one starting to form here. It's a little baby in there. It's been kind of a job keeping the vines off the grass too. I've been trying to be good about that. Okay, I don't see, oh. This is an autumn acorn squash. And there are some fruits forming in here. And then we've got a weeby little pumpkin. So it uh, forms those cute little orange pumpkins. And there are, I'm seeing like a dozen of them already forming in here. And then this is a blue Hubbard. <laughs> this one's like taking over, it's climbing the fence. It's kind of going outside of the fence, which is okay. Our neighbors have agreed to let us plant a little bit on the outside so we could try to mask all these big poles. Um, anyway, so I'm not really worried about that, but I thought you guys might like to see just what I do with areas that I have no plan for. It's a really good way to just get a little bit of extra produce and have something there. Otherwise, it would just be growing weeds here and that doesn't look good. So. Anyway, that's pretty much it for this tour. I hope you enjoyed seeing kind of how everything's doing. I'm really thrilled with the space and I'm excited to actually plant next year. I've already been thinking about how I'm gonna rotate my crops, where I'm gonna plant everything. It's really exciting. So anyway, thanks for hanging out with me this morning and we will see you in the next video. Bye.